The name William W. Belknap might not ring a bell for you right now, but this once obscure official from the 1800s is playing a starring role in the second impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. His story will help us answer the question, can a former president be impeached? Hey, I'm Katie from PolitiFact, and I will be your American history teacher today. Eyes on the chalkboard. Ever since the January 6th Capitol riot, there's been some question about the legality of an impeachment trial against former President Trump. Of the three U.S. presidents who have been impeached, Trump is the only one who will face a Senate impeachment trial after leaving office. That has some wondering, what's the point of a trial if Trump can no longer be removed from office? Trump's legal team says that a trial is moot. Trump is in Florida, not the White House. There are many constitutional arguments against this. We don't use our political preferences to tear down the Constitution. But for Democrats, there are several reasons to go ahead and pursue the trial, including the possibility of preventing Trump from seeking office again. They say there is precedent, and that's where William Worth Belknap comes in. Back in 1876, Belknap resigned his post as Secretary of War under President Ulysses S. Grant just hours before the House voted to impeach him on bribery charges. His resignation didn't do anything to stop Congress from moving ahead with the impeachment and the Senate trial. Not only did the House move forward with the impeachment, but the Senate convened a trial and voted as a chamber that Mr. Belknap could be tried, quote, for acts done as Secretary of War notwithstanding his resignation of said office. The language is crystal clear without any ambiguity. Belknap's lawyers tried to argue that the case should be dismissed for lack of jurisdiction since Belknap was technically a private citizen at the time. That sounds a lot like President Trump's argument too. But the Senate rejected this motion by a vote of 37 to 29, saying they did have the constitutional authority to move ahead. Experts told PolitiFact that Belknap's situation is the most direct parallel with Trump. At other times, Congress has decided not to pursue impeachment after an official has resigned office. Remember, that's what happened with Richard Nixon. There are some details in the Belknap story that give some credence to what Trump's team is saying. The Senate failed to reach the two-thirds threshold needed to convict Belknap, which led to his acquittal. Ultimately, 22 of the senators who supported Belknap's acquittal said they did so because they believed the trial was unconstitutional given the fact that he resigned. Here's the big picture. Easy answers for impeachment ambiguities cannot be found in the text of the Constitution. And for that, we can either thank or blame the framers. The nonpartisan Congressional Research Service looked at the possibility of impeaching a former president back in mid-January. They concluded that most scholars who have looked at this say Congress has authority to extend the impeachment process to officials who are no longer in office. Post-impeachment life wasn't so bad for William Belknap. He went on to live a relatively quiet life as a lawyer before he died in 1890 at age 61. All right, that concludes today's history lesson. For more coverage of impeachment, go to our website, politifact.com, and be sure to subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this.